Hey everybody, it's Friday. Um, it's Friday the 31st of March 2023. My name's Carl Monaghan. Um, I'm one of the founders of Pelvic Pain Matters. Um, I'm the owner um, and clinical director of the Pelvic Pain Clinic and I'm a former sufferer of pelvic pain myself as well. These are my Friday takeaways. These are little snippets and reflections from um, my working week, things I've covered with patients um, or reflections I've had over the journey of pe my recovery to pel uh, of pelvic pain or my patients. Um, some of you may know me already, some of you may not. I, I just want to give a brief um, explanation I suppose. Uh, so I was doing these regularly every single Friday um, up until the start of the year um, and very tragically suddenly and, and unexpectedly my mum passed away on Christmas Day so we had no forewarning, she was fit and healthy um, so it's really blown myself and my family away and I've taken a bit of a step back from work. I'm gradually leaning back into activity again so you'll start to see me more doing these on Fridays plus other activities on the Pelvic Pain uh, Matters website um, page as well as the recovery room as well. So today's um, takeaway is about being more than just a flexible person in pain. And this came off the back of a webinar that I did with Jo, our communications manager on Monday. She asked me what were the top three things that I've learnt in my time from treating male pelvic pain. And one of them was about the chronicity of pain, one of them was about flare-ups, and one of them was about only focusing on one thing at a time. And I had this conversation with patients very regularly, um, and it's important to have an holistic or integrated approach to the recovery of pain. If you're only using a monotherapy, that is a single approach, then it's probably going to be fairly limited in the outcomes. And you can increase your chances of general well-being and therefore recovery by having a multifaceted approach. That is looking at a range of different tools and techniques to support and guide you through recovery as well. So what I mean here is um, if you are only stretching for example, and stretching and the myofascial approach, only focusing on muscles, means that you might end up a really flexible person that is still in pain. Now that doesn't mean that your symptoms won't change, I'm not saying that at all, but to increase the chances of your recovery, um, it's important to take more of an integrated approach. I had a patient of mine last week, a uh, 25 year old male uh, with bladder pain symptoms. Um, he's had them for a while now, a couple of years, and he said to me, and this reflects exactly what I'm going through with you today, he would rather be a fit and healthy person with bladder pain than an unfit and healthy person with bladder pain. And the approach of him taking on board general well-being is likely to support and guide him through recovery far smoother than him only focusing on food, for example. So... This can be a bit of a challenge, so working with a specialist or specialist group is really helpful here because it can get pretty lonely out there by yourself trying to figure out what to do and when to do it and how to do it and how often to do it. Um, you know, if you only stretch but you've got a really crap lifestyle, for example, you're staying up super, super late, um, you're not getting up in the morning, you're kind of rolling out of bed and then rolling into work, um, or you're stretching loads but, but the food you're eating is, is not great, um, then it's not going to support you in recovery. If you're not exercising um, and, and increasing your general well-being, then again you're going to be a flexible person that's in pain. And if you're not getting a good work-life balance, setting boundaries around work and phone usage, then again you become a really flexible person that's still in pain. Every case is unique and individual, but there are definitely key areas that you can all be working upon that will give an increased chance of you seeing more results in your recovery. So movement and activity. Becoming slowly more active. Diet and nutrition. Cleaning up and tidying your diet up. Not eating crap. Being mindful of, of intake of alcohol and caffeine. And then sleep. 
the importance of sleep is so undervalued. Sleep is where our bodies get a chance to rest and recover and repair. So there are some key elements that you can introduce or really tighten up in in your recovery. And this is about mindfulness. So mindfulness isn't about sitting in meditation alone. Mindfulness is about the choices that we make. Mindfulness is about knowing that there is always another option. So this might be, I've woken up in the morning, I've set my alarm to get up and do some exercises, but it's like it is today, and I'm on the south coast of England, there's a, a storm hitting the coast at the moment, so it's very wet and very windy. It would be very easy for me this morning to, for example, hit the snooze button once, maybe twice, maybe four or five times and go back to sleep. Sleep, it's never proper sleep. Um, and put off me getting up, having a good morning routine and entering the day in a far more calm and settled state. It would be very easy just to say, I'm not going to do it today. But if you don't do it today, then it becomes easier for you not to do it tomorrow and the day afterwards, and the day afterwards, and the day afterwards. And it becomes even easier to do that when you're not feeling great. So let's say you've had a rubbish night's sleep, or um, your symptoms are a little bit higher, um, or you know it's a busy day in work, or, or any of the above or others. It would be very easy just to hit that snooze button over and over and over again. Mindfulness is saying, right, okay, I want to make an investment in my well-being. I want to make an investment in my recovery. And my long-term aim is to recover. But I'm aware that I need to take steps in order to get there. So my alarm's gone off. It'd be much easier to stay in bed. It's warm, it's comfortable, it's dry. And it means I don't have to do any of those movements, for example. Our system our brains, the way we respond, our habits and our behaviours are much like an algorithm that a social media platform might use. The more you do something, the easier it becomes for you to do it. Now that could be a good and virtuous behaviour. It could be something that's really, really helpful. The more you do that, then the more likely you are to do it. And especially if you're seeing the results, which is why the other components, the diet, the sleep, the exercise, they're all part and parcel of this integrated approach. But, and it's really easy, it's really, really easy. I've been there myself, I know this only too well. It's really easy to go, ah, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. But in doing it tomorrow, you're putting off a chance for you to have a better day today. And that better day today could add a bit more balance and a bit more sustainability to the environment that you're starting to generate and starting to create for your recovery. So the algorithm works both ways. The more you do something virtuously for you in recovery, then the easier it becomes to do it more and more often. The more you hit the snooze button, for example, the easier it becomes to hit the snooze button. That's mindfulness personified, knowing that there's always a, cho a choice, knowing that there's always an option that you could do something differently. And like I said, that can come down to sleep. Oh, I'm just going to watch another episode of that Netflix thing. Or I go to bed now, feel refreshed, get up in the morning, do my movements in the morning. It means I won't have to rush my breakfast. And if I'm rushing my breakfast, I may pick up something along the way. Or I may not get anything, depending on whether you're having breakfast or not. And then it's very easy, if you're feeling tired and fatigued, that you make poorer choices around your food. Maybe you're choosing energy rich or energy dense foods, high carbohydrate load, processed sugary foods to give you that kick. And maybe you have more than one or two coffees, maybe it's three or four, for example. And then it repeats. Eat, sleep, rinse, repeat over and over and over again. But if you start going to bed a little bit earlier, if you make that investment, if you make that mindful decision to say, I want to get better, and even if you're having a rubbish day, in fact, more importantly, if you're having a rubbish day, that's when you really, really need to make sure that you are still sticking with the plan. Because those rubbish days are going to come along. I guarantee that they're going to happen. You're going to feel fed up and disillusioned and disinterested and, I mean, lots and lots of disses in there. Um, it'll be very easy just to say, sod it, I'm not going to bother today. But that is the most important time for you to say, I deserve this. I want to recover. I know it's tough. 
I wish it was much easier. But this is a complex condition. This is not this is not something you recover from in a couple of days or a week. And this is why your behaviours that you choose to do and and integrate into your lifestyle across those domains I've already mentioned, that they will collectively start to build up and create the right environment. This isn't for a week or two weeks or even a month. You're looking long term here. Be mindful that this is probably going to take a multi a multiple months in order for you to see a, a change and steady change. But the research and the clinical findings show that the more stability you have in your life, the more you're doing your self-care, the more you're in a fixed routine, the more sustainability you have in recovery. It, it helps to future-proof against flare-ups, not stop them, absolutely not stop them, but it reduces the chances of you having them and reduces the impact of you having them. So be more than just a flexible person in pain. Consider there, that there are other lifestyle things that you can do mindfully that will make a big difference in your recovery. That's my Friday takeaway for today. I could go into, I could, I mean, I could do a whole day's presentation on this, literally a whole day's presentation. Be more mindful more of the time about the choices and make the right decisions for you. Aim long term. Don't just go for today or tomorrow. Be aware that your choices now will dictate your behaviour tomorrow and, and next week and probably next month as well. So take those virtuous steps towards creating a virtuous cycle in recovery. I'm going to be doing these very regularly now, um, but I'd also like your input. What do you need from me? What strategies are you looking for? What advice? What feedback do you need from me? Um, and put them in the comments below, <clears throat> right down here, and let me know. And I will build a plan and a program moving further forward of content that I will deliver to you in Friday Takeaways. My Friday Takeaways, Carl's Friday Takeaways. That's it. It's Friday, the last day of the month. It's pretty miserable where I am. hope it's brighter where you are. But you can make your day brighter by your actions and your behaviours. Be mindful. It's well worth it. Till next time.